All right, now we're gonna talk about generators. First, first and foremost, safety with generators, very important. Again, practice all your standard uh, trailer hitch safety that you've been taught. Um, you know, make sure when you're hooking the customer up, make sure it's latched, safety chains on, emergency brake uh, connection is made. That way, if, they, if it does come off, that's gonna throw the brakes. Um, you've got a leveling jack up here. We do have a flip tongue on ours. Not all, the, not all manufacturers put a flip tongue on theirs. Make sure it's uh, secure. Uh, you've got your leveling jack. Try and get it as level as possible. So we've got DOT rated lighting and reflective strips all the way around the unit. We have a sound attenuated enclosure with lockable latches. You can put a padlock on every single door on this unit. Once you open these up, we've got a heavy duty automatic door stays. It's gonna keep that door up. Your maintenance guys are not gonna get hit on the head. Um, got plenty of room in here. So both sides, we've got a safety guard over the engine and the radiator fan. Uh, so nobody's gonna stick their hands in there. Battery disconnect switch. If somebody's doing maintenance, um, you know, you don't want anybody to walk up and be able to turn it on. So make sure you use that safety battery disconnect switch. Uh, also, that's one of the big features. Uh, you're going to get a call. Hey, this thing won't work. C customers don't look for that switch. So make sure they've got it turned on when they go to use it. Um, we also have a lockable cap here so nobody can steal your diesel on the job site. As we come around to the back, we've got a large clear panel here so you can see the controller without opening this door. So if you have a padlock on here, you can still see what's going on with the generator through the clear door. On the inside here, all kinds of instructions, how to operate the unit, electrical safety, um, wiring connections, uh, your voltage selector switch, which is up here. So big thing, there's a safety interlock here. This is gonna shut the generator down if somebody opens this door while the unit's running. You don't want anybody to change the voltage selector switch while it's running. It will tear the generator to pieces. Uh, you've also got your vo uh, voltage regulator potentiometers in here. Shouldn't have to touch those as a user. Uh, that's more for your maintenance guys. Coming around to this side, very important. We've got an exposed e-stop, emergency stop switch. Um, it is best to have these exposed. Some manufacturers put them behind a door. If that door is locked, you cannot stop this in an emergency. If somebody's being electrocuted, uh, there's a fire or something like that, you want to be able to get to that. Another thing you're going to get calls on, it's going to be pushed in and it, the unit won't run. So your customers are going to call, hey, this thing, piece of junk, it won't run. Is the e-stop pulled out? One of the first things to ask them. Here we have the breaker panel. So you've got your main circuit breaker and all your individual outlet breakers. So these breakers are for all these outlets here. Uh, these are all safety devices. They're going to protect anybody from an overcurrent situation, uh, short circuit, things like that. Um, if something happens, it's going to trip the breaker and kill the power to the receptacles or the lugs. If you have cam locks, they'll be located here. Uh, this is the lug panel. Again, we have a safety interlock so that nobody can access these while the unit's running and these are hot. Uh, you know, if you're in 480 volt mode, you definitely don't want anybody getting in here and sticking their fingers in. Uh, if this is out at an event where there's going to be kids present, you know, they're prone to open doors and look inside things. So you do not want them to be able to access those while they're hot. Add lockable, sound attenuation, and we've got a grate on this side. That's it for the safety features. All right, from an operating standpoint. Uh, when this goes out, if you need to go over it with your customer, first thing first, what voltage do they need? The standard settings are going to be 12240 single phase. That's like you have in your home. 12208 three phase and 277 483 phase. There is a, a fourth position that you can get with a four position switch and that's going to be 12240 delta three phase. Um, it's only used in certain areas around the country. Uh, it's not real popular, but you will see it every once in a while. So just make sure you ask your customer what voltage they need. If they're unsure, 
you need to ask more questions because it's very important that they don't go out and apply the wrong voltage to some equipment. It'll fry it. So set your voltage selector switch first. Close the door so that the interlock's not going to trigger any alarms. <clears throat> Come around here. Turn on your battery disconnect switch. That's going to supply power to everything on board. Come back here. You can turn on your controller power. That's going to energize the controller. You've got starting instructions here, and you've got some other buttons here. This one's called engine speed, and it's got settings for run or idle. Cold weather, uh, some customers like to start in idle. Uh, that way the generator warms up before you put it in run mode. Uh, with our units, idle is going to be 1,000 to 1,200 RPMs. Run speed is obviously 1,800 RPMs in the U.S. and North America. You've got a couple other uh, covers here. These are actually not switches on this one, but uh, you will see it on some of the older units, uh, Tier 4 interims, where they had a forced exhaust regen. Um, you've got to turn that on or off. With the Tier 4 finals, you no longer have to do that. They automatically do it. The ECU controls the regen on the John Deere units, and the Isuzu's use a, a system that, uh, where you don't need to do forced regen. Uh, you've got an option here for fuel transfer pump. If you do have a day tank or an auxiliary tank that's feeding this unit, uh, you can request that and there will be a switch there. And then we've got another place there for different options that we offer. Down here, you've got operating instructions. So step by step, it tells you what to do in order to start and stop the machine. You've got your wiring connection diagram here for the lug panel uh, that corresponds to the different positions on the voltage selector switch. So this has powered up. Uh, we've got our main breaker off and the doors closed so the starting instructions that you go through you want to put it in manual mode by selecting that it says manual mode right there uh, go over and hit the green start button it will start the unit in order to stop it you just hit the red stop button uh, the other option for this is auto mode that's where you use the remote start terminals to start the unit. So if you have a submersible pump with a float switch, uh, that float switch is going to come up and it's going to trigger the generator to start to power the submersible pump. And then once it pumps down, the float switch drops back down, it'll send a signal to stop the unit. Uh, if, there's, if you need to stop it on your own, you can't hit the red stop button or the emergency stop will also stop it if there is an emergency. It is not as advisable to use the e-stop to start and stop the unit. Um, you know, it's, it's going to wear out. It is an emergency stop only. It's not the stop button, so use the stop button. All right, let's talk a little bit about applications and phases construction for generators. Again, like light towers, generators are used throughout all phases of construction. Uh, you know, whether it's the initial site work where they're dewatering or trying to run a job site trailer, Obviously, you need power at a remote site or where there's no utility power yet. Um, events are very big for these, so municipalities, schools, churches, um, you know, sporting complexes where they're having big tournaments and things like that. They need lights. They need power. From an application standpoint, you know, anywhere where utility power is not available or it's not reliable, a lot of times you'll see they'll have utility power available at a site. They might not have the right voltage or it might not be reliable and you know say a concert that's why um, movie studios they always use generators to power all their equipment because they can't run the risk of the utility shutting off while they're in the middle of something uh, everybody's probably remembers a few years ago during the super bowl uh, power power went out down in dallas and the game stopped lights went out in the stadium um, you know obviously you don't want that to happen so that's why a lot of events are run on generator power um, you know, all types of contractors, every single trade needs a generator, whether it's a small portable or something like this or even bigger. You can't think of a trade that doesn't have some piece of equipment that's run off of power. So everybody needs power. Um, you know, emergency uh, situations like uh, tornadoes, hurricanes, obviously power's out. People are going to need power. So FEMA and, uh, you know, local municipalities are good resources as well to go after. Thank you.